Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only semi jet lag state. Yeah, so. Semi jet lag, gotcha. So it was, I think it was really seven weeks I was away a lot, um, starting in Europe, in Paris, which was actually um, interesting from a certainly a cycling perspective and what they're doing there with Villib and bike lanes, and then to two, the two sister cities of Fremantle, um, Capitolando in Sicily and Italy, and then under Korchla in Croatia, and then which were both very interesting, and then across to the US, um, starting in New York, Washington, Portland, Vancouver, San Francisco. I was in Paris in 2006 or seven, just before the VLIB opened, and then to come back now that it's actually up and been up and running for a few years, and it's just changed the city, and it changes how you can interact with the city. Anyone can get on a bike and ride around, and they've just put in hundreds of kilometres of bike lanes, and actually it makes the city so accessible, and, it, and it's so, so bike friendly, and it does get people out of their cars and all those, those clear benefits. Yeah, I was actually very impressed, and I mean, they, they've got the biggest bike share system in the world. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. And four years ago they had nothing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a historic city, very similar, but much older than ours in terms of really com very, very compact me me medieval core and then a yeah. um, really, really beautiful, I mean, beautiful small, small town. For me that was interesting because you learn about how to activate heritage places because then heritage is not something, it's just not 100, 100 odd years old, it's hundreds and hundreds and, and then, so you've got to use those places and they did a much better job than we did about actually bringing heritage to life and not seeing it as a, as a museum. It's important, hmm. heritage uh, story and making the most of the heritage. And yeah, and I mean, and, that, and I did come away from this trip actually realising that heritage, I mean, it's such a controversial issue in Fremantle, you kind of, it almost gets a bad name, but, but it, it is what makes Fremantle special. And we do, and I think the success of doing new development in Fremantle is to acknowledge that it's not, a her it's not, it's not about knocking over heritage buildings anymore. It's about Doing development without that. How good are they at doing new development that has heritage qualities? Much better than we are, yeah. I mean, Korchler um, does that very well. And they have a real clear sense of identity about what, how the new should fit with the old and that it should have a similar language. Okay. It, certainly the Pearl District in Portland was, for me, the highlight in, in Fremantle scale density about how, how you would do that. And it was simple things. It was about where you can reuse a building, reuse it. So to do that creates that sense of place. Put in, Put in something like a light rail system that actually creates that sense of permanency and, and it somehow it connects the place up. It, it's, there's something magical about rail which people don't quite get. And I, it, in the way that if you put a bus line in there, it wouldn't. It just it just makes a place feel like it's it's, it's got a centre and it's got importance and it's it's going to be part of the city. And then it's about activation at the street level, and that's something that very few places get right. And they just abs absolutely mandated it. You have your eyes for it too, you can see, you know what that activation means. Yeah, that's but it means important. small shops and lots of them and diversity in those shops. Mm. And then the other thing they did very well was affordability. They just mandated diversity in okay. really, really, I mean, whole buildings what were... What proportion? Do you have any idea? With, um, depends, some, some whole buildings were 100%. Across the whole area, um, we're pro probably looking, and I, I probably do have it somewhere, I'm trying to remember if it was 25 or 40 percent, but it was it was, quite, it was quite high. Because you are looking at it through the eyes of what could be done here. Hmm. I, I thought that the Pearl District was so good, and so I mean, I I actually think yeah, if anyone, I think almost we need to send people there to look at it in terms of the East End. And what was really interesting about it um, was well that it, ma it made you realise that height is not the issue. If you get everything else right. The height is the least important factor. The last part of that equation is actually public space, mm. creating higher quality interactive public spaces. And they've got this great park in the middle of Pearl District, right. which families just flock to. And it's very simple. It's, it hasn't, I mean, it's got your normal swings and things, but it's got a water feature in the middle that's a tidal water feature. So, oh, okay. so it just it slowly rises and then it disappears. And then five minutes later, it comes back again. And it's just really, really simple. Yeah. And, but kids just... Kids Love it, and it, get yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. But then, so you have all these. But then, all of a sudden, you know, how you often new developments in the parks are kind of empty, desolate places, it's full of families. Every time I went there, and I was went there probably half a dozen yeah. times. And for me, all those elements bring them together, and all of a sudden, you've got a great new urban community. And I think um, the question is, how do we do that in the East End? And Nutsford Street's the same. I mean, yeah. part of me, I came back thinking, Nutsford Street has so much potential, but I think we need to ramp it up to the next level which is that it needs to actually be higher density than we've proposed and needs to be uh, 
I mean, I think, why don't we think about actually incorporating a transit system into that, into that area? Incorporate, again, much stricter design on ground floor uses and actually really revisit that as, I mean, at the moment we've got a much better outcome than McMansions, which it was going to be four years ago. We've come halfway mm. to a... To, so, and so there's just those kind of... Um, yeah. This is a really exciting... I think it's an exciting time for urban development and Fremantle hasn't got many brownfield sites left to do it. No, I've got to do it well. So you've got to do it well. I think, I mean, interesting seeing also, you know, a Republican, Bloomberg, just doing very innovative things. Um, and... Um, and the whole road diet one is fascinating as well. I mean, I didn't mention the politics of it, but he wants to. Apparently, the politics are he wanted to do a congestion tax, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't. And you know, he lost that, and he was like, "Okay, well, if I can't do that, then we're going to be on a road diet until the congestion tax comes in." And uh, just, just returning what was a car dominated city to the people. And you just saw these amazing parks right in the middle of intersections, mm -hmm. and then people drinking coffee, reading newspapers, mm -hmm. playing doing hula hoop lessons yeah. in the middle of the road. <laughs> when, you, when you travel, you can sort of see these opportunities mm. and you come back and you have fresh eyes. Well, and, and that with me was, it actually was realising the things that we don't think are possible are very possible. Mm. And that, that for me that was, and, all, and also realising the extent to which other places have gone in terms of taking these things to the next level. Do you feel more confident about Yeah, and probably more ambitious in terms of actually thinking what we can do. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... I think um, realising that actually we're, there's a lot more that could be done um, and, and that we, we, need, we need to seize the opportunity. Activation of public, of public spaces and making public spaces work. And I, look, I look out in the King Square every day and just think it could be such a great space and it's not. But also realize how easy it will be to make the, the great space. I mean, one of the key things that I re I'm going to be pushing hard on is why don't we open the library out so it opens out onto the square and you can go out and read your, read your library books in the sun? Wow, <laughs> great idea. <laughs> I have never thought of that before. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so, and then... We don't have the climate for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what they do all over the US is they have chairs and tables and they just put them out yeah. and people can use them. Mm. And you... And in New York, they didn't even bother packing them away at night. They just leave two chairs and tables out. And they went, yeah, we get a few stolen, but it's cheaper than packing them up every day. So we just, we just replace them once it gets stolen. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I mean so and those kind of things. Um, yeah, simple things like, you know, having free Wi-Fi out there, having um, just places where people want to, want to get out there and all of a sudden you have a, a square that's used by people and people interact. And that was inspired by Bryant Park because that's what they've got. They've got the, that's where their biggest library is and they have a whole section of it out in the park. And you just go out and they're all and full of books and, um, and you can request books from the main library to come out to the park and yeah. read new, all the newspapers are there and that's what you do. Yeah. And, and so there's all, all of a sudden, always, and it's just packed. Yeah. It's just amazing. Things to do. And Table tennis, that, that's, that's my other thing. I want to, uh, having things for, and for me, about young people where we just don't provide any good fun things for young people to do. Mm. We're such, such a serious, and actually having, so lots of places in New York that had metal table tennis tables mm. with metal nets and bring your own bat and ball and you have a game. So, you know, it was, it was great fun. I used to, you know, so, and, and, you know, all those things. It's about activating spaces and you just saw so many places that just do it so well. Did you go on the High Line in New York? In fact, I stayed in New York, I hired an apartment that the High Line, the original High Line, they haven't actually redone this, but yeah, actually ran through the middle of my building. Could you see the application of that to the old Fremantle traffic bridge? Absolutely. In fact, absolutely. Have you been to, so the, the, the name of the island, Grattan Island, is it? So they've got this restaurant that's actually built into the under part of the bridge. Okay, yes. yes. And, um, and I was also... The big bridge, the big bridge yeah. And actually realising that once we deactivate that bridge as a, as just as a, as a primary car route, all the things you can do with it, you can actually put restaurants underneath it and, yeah, as you say, do a high line kind of thing on top of it. And um, I just think that's going to be actually a real asset to Fremantle if we get creative. And it's, again, it's about that creative responses to things. Yeah. Also went to a place called Carmel by the Sea, which is, uh, do you know about... With, uh, with the, uh, the dude who was the man. Um, oh, yeah, Clint Eastwood was, yours. You. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that, of course. Yeah. Well, it's the most bizarre town, but I mean, it's this classic town full of movie stars. Yeah. And, we, and um, 
beautiful, absolutely beautiful historic town. And I was like, this is my fear for Fremantle. Yeah. Because it was, it had, it was just, everything was perfect and it had no soul. And you just went, this is actually what you don't want your town to become. It's just a, a big, a big museum. <laughs> and uh, it was interesting staying in such a beautiful place and realising that it was actually the fear of, of what you've... Well, so it was like a retirement village. It was, exactly. It felt like a massive, very beautiful retirement village. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the great image to finish. <laughs> we know what we don't want. Yeah. So, no, so it was inspiring both, both, uh, from both ends. Yeah. yeah.